What's up, Internet? We're back with another video, this time going into part two of choosing your WordPress theme and why it's so difficult to choose a WordPress theme. As always, it's PluginTut.com, YouTube.com slash PluginTut. Uh, do subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thumbs up if you like these videos. We've got a recent question that just came through and two questions I sort of want to um, address in this video. First, most recent question says, hey, what kind of theme do you recommend uh, if I want a site where I post videos, photos, articles, magazine type jokes, uh, I'm finding what themes to choose, thanks. That is a super unique question, right? I mean, uh, if you came to me and said, hey, what's the best real estate theme, I might be able to point you in the right direction. If I say, what's the best restaurant theme, you know, pointing you in the right direction there. And then even with that direction, uh, it really f comes down to the brand, right? The, what, what the look and feel of a site. And I sort of covered that in this original video. But also to piggyback off of this comment that came through a few uh, about a week ago or two weeks ago, uh, the title is incredibly misleading. I find all theme uh, plug-in choices overwhelming and hope, was hoping that this could help. Uh, this particular commenter thought that there could just be an answer, right? Like to the first question here where uh, the gentleman asked, you know, I'm looking for photos, videos, articles, magazine type joke theme. Like that doesn't even exist. I don't know of any designer who sets out to build a, a theme specifically for that, which makes all of this stuff so hard. And as I sort of tried to answer in the Zen Master B um, dialogue that we had was, the, that is the problem, that everybody comes to the table with a very unique uh, list of requirements. Uh, I mean, again, if you're not just looking for a straight blog or, again, real estate, something that's really cut and dry, um, most customers come, at least to me, with a very unique feature set. And I'm going to pull your attention over to my testing site. It really starts with planning your content first. How do you want to present this content to the user? Even if there was a theme that was perfect, with air quotes, for, you know, the magazine style photo video joke website, even if there was a theme out there specifically for that, is it the right theme for you? Is it going to be the right design for your audience? Is your audience going to be able to find the content that they need to find for your website? Then looking at the goals of a website, right, is it just like uh, a fun thing that you're doing. You're just publishing this content and you're just doing it for fun. There's no real goal. It's just something you enjoy doing. Okay, maybe. But if there are business goals, you're trying to sell a product, you're trying to get people on an email list, you're trying to get people to uh, sign up to a course, maybe you're trying to do uh, advertising revenue with uh, either paid sponsor spots or something like that, you have to look at those goals as well. How do I solve this for my customer coming to my website or visitor or reader coming to this website? And then what are those business goals? How am I really going to measure this site as successful, right? These are questions that I have with my clients when they're coming to me to build websites. Uh, it's not just about the look and feel. It's not just about, oh, that's the best theme right there. Well, I guess I'll just use that. It's just, it's Im really impossible to answer Um you know, this question to, to uh, you know, 100% certainty. Let's just talk about content real quick. And of course, I'm going to be biased because I'm going to show you my products. Uh, so you feel free to tune out <laughs> if, if you so choose. But I built a product specifically for um, bucketing content and displaying it in blocks, right? So again, taking that question where the gentleman asks about like sort of mix a mix of content, blog posts, video, photos, jokes, that kind of thing. If you were in that kind of situation, I have a plugin called Conductor Plugin. There's a bunch of other plugins out there that do stuff similarly to what we do, but this is my thinking. I'm just on the homepage, and I'm not going to go super deep into this. I'm on the homepage here of my example site, and I just have these three blog posts, right? So uh, this is Conductor showing three blog posts. Got a ton of videos if you want to learn how to use this stuff. Uh, this is just general posts, and this is just all categories. You know, but if I wanted to say, hey, I want to add in that joke uh, content type, and let's just pretend here that uh, the these are all the jokes, all the jokes. I'm going to say many posts because let's just pretend I'm, I'm selecting from a bunch of posts and I'm going to say, uh, I'll, I'll just go with two jokes. <laughs> you know, again, we're just making this stuff up um, and maybe I have a jokes category. So maybe I'm selecting something from the jokes category. I might just click on this one just to see what happens. I don't even know uh, if there's enough there. Okay, let's, let's just go with that. So I'm pretending I'm going to show two jokes. I'm going to set the display settings to two, whoops, two columns. 
just because it looks a little bit better. And I can now say, look, here are here's the joke content, right? And uh, you know, on the home page of the site, maybe I'm going to put jokes on top, and then these are going to be just my regular blog posts right here. Okay, so those are my blog posts. And, you know, I'm, I'm being able to craft a page, a landing page, a home page with blocks of collected content. So when you're sitting down and sort of drafting the, the strategy behind picking a theme and designing a website, which you should do first, uh, it shouldn't be about selecting the theme first. It should be about drafting that plan first. Think about how you want to display that content. Think about what's most important for your visitor to your website to make sure they're finding this content uh, exclusively on a homepage or a landing page, okay? This is just one example. Um, if there's a theme out there that you really love the design of, well, maybe you can use a plugin like mine, a conductor plugin. You might be able to put that on there and collect these buckets of content. Makes it easy for you to sort of shape that stuff. There's other plugins out there that'll do this as well. Um, just know that there's always going to be sort of maybe, or maybe a 20% sort of, you get to tweak it a little bit to work with that theme that you love so much. Uh, you know, it's no different than buying a car. You found the perfect car, but maybe the seats aren't hundred percent comfortable. Are you going to swap out the seats? Eh, maybe not. Um, so thinking about, thinking about the approach you take to presenting content and the strategy of your site, theme versus plugin, theme and a plugin situation like that. Then there's always the route. Uh, that you can go, which is a page builder route. And I just happen to have Elementor on here from the last video I just did. And I'm going to go to edit post and then click on edit with Elementor. The next approach is when you're thinking about uh, picking the, the best theme for your situation is well, maybe I'll use a page builder. Um, and in a page builder situation, you could build whatever you want. So Going back to that gentleman's question, jokes, videos, photos, blogs, news, magazine, uh, you could literally start with a blank canvas and design it from uh, as you uh, desire, right? I mean, putting the call to actions where you want, creating the blocks of, of content where you want, um, and adjusting everything from font colors to design, but it's going to be a whole heck of a lot of time uh, synced into doing that, and if you're not a designer, it's going to be quite a challenge. Uh, and look, I, I've been saying for for months now, page builders are definitely turning turning the corner. They're getting better. They're getting faster. But guess what? If you're not a designer, you're left with this blank canvas that we're looking at right here to you know start literally from scratch. Sure, they have some templates um, that you could pull in and start with those templates. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to grab one right here. Insert this one. Certainly not going to address uh, the question that the gentleman asked about all of that different various pieces of content. But anyway, the point is you could start with these types of templates, but then you're left again going in and tweaking this stuff, modifying it uh, to your to your your uh, desired output. And if you're not a designer, uh, things are going to start to look a little shaky. I mean, today I went to a marketer's website. Somebody told me about this great course that they were taking. So naturally being interested in designing and selling uh, courses myself and sort of the art of creating a website for that. I was like, oh, I got to go check this website out. Um, and they were using Divi. And, you know, again, I, I like Divi for its particular feature set. But I certainly uh, don't consider myself a designer and I wouldn't be in there designing from scratch. This person started designing from scratch with Divi and it was an awful looking website. It was very jarring. Uh, the, the text and, and the background didn't contrast well. Um, people get sold on the idea of page builders being this solution to everything uh, when in fact there's a challenge there, uh, there's a time sink, there's an investment, and you have to be skilled to some degree. I mean, again, unless you're going to use these templates that are already uh, set out for you. This is all to say, I totally understand and sympathize with people who can't make a decision on a WordPress theme. They don't know which one is the best one that they should go with. All I can say from my experience is maybe consult with a professional, even if you don't want to hire a web designer, Turn to somebody uh, who, who you know in your local market uh, that is a web designer uh, that, that you trust or somebody else recommends and say, hey, look, do you, do you do WordPress? Do you do WordPress really well? Do you really know it well? If so, can I just take an hour of your time, $100, to consult with you on picking the best theme uh, for my needs, and I'll take it the rest of the way. 
Look at the first example before, like I said, using something like a conductor or a good strategy. Craft a good strategy on how you want to present your content and start with that. Draft it out. Um, look at competitor websites before you go all in on picking a theme and you just getting so, sort of exhausted and frustrated putting this stuff all together. Trust me, I've seen it a million times. I mean, people are leaving comments here talking about how hard it is. At the end, you could always go with a page builder. I've been recommending Beaver Builder. I'm starting to get into Elementor and I like Divi. I mean, these three page builders, they all have their pros and cons. I've got a bunch of videos out there. But just remember, the time sink in page builders is incredible, right? Especially if it's your first time um, and you're not a designer and you're trying to get things perfect. You really should hire a professional at that point. And maybe that's a good strategy. Maybe you can start with a theme, build it yourself, get it that 80% of the way there, like I talked about in part one of this video series, and then hire somebody for that 20%. I would say if you're going to do that, and <laughs> so I can take a step back and, and save all of my uh, WordPress developer colleagues here, uh, pick a good, you know, pick one of the well-known themes or uh, page builders. Again, uh, a Beaver Builder and Elementor are going to be pretty fair and safe when you bring it to a uh, consultant. Pick a good theme base. Uh, again, I know I'm biased. I have uh, my theme on WordPress.org, Baton. Uh, you could use Genesis um, if you're into something like that. Generate Press is another one I've heard doing some good things. Uh, so start with a solid foundation. If you have to, spend a little money to talk to somebody who's a professional in all this stuff. Leave a question in one of my videos. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a chance to answer it like this. Um, as part two, I don't know if I'm going to go into a part three for this series, picking a WordPress theme. I feel like most people, uh, except for that one comment, were pretty happy with how I described it in part one. Maybe part two, this part two is taking it uh, that last mile for you to sort of make that decision. If not, leave a question below and I'll try to answer that for you. If you enjoy videos like this, go ahead and thumbs up. If you like the stuff that I'm doing on Plugin Tut, uh, go ahead and like the channel. Uh, you might know if you've been following me for a little while, I do a live show every week or so. My co-host is sort of out right now because he just had a baby. Congratulations, Joe. Um, but we are doing a new thing. If you go to PluginTut.com slash ask, A-S-K, um, you can submit an audio question and we'll play that uh, on the air during our live show of Plugged In Radio. Really appreciate everybody who is subscribed to the channel. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, uh, growing a little bit faster than I thought, but I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.